After pulling the new summon 20 to minute 4 maps, I have created a tier list, ranking each map from S to F. Normally I would go through each map one by one, but today I'll show you the entire list up front. Some maps did end up with lower ratings, but I will explain my reasoning for each one. Although not every map was great, I find it exciting to try out new maps during seasonal updates. They are essentially free new content from the, for the game, and that is what matters. Some maps are simply better designed and looks more appealing. I'm guessing Valve will consider keeping some of these maps permanently in the game, and I hope this video will encourage them to keep the top rated maps and remove the lower ones. To be fair, if I spent more time playing each map, my rankings would might change. Instead of a tier list, I would like to show you the good and the bad. Some of you might have different opinions about the maps, and if that's the case, please leave a comment below. But before that, let's go through each map one by one. Applejack takes place in an apple orchard where blue and red teams are fighting for apples. Apparently, the apple business is booming. The objective is to capture the flag. The map looks cozy, with chickens roaming around, making it feel special. Gameplay-wise, it is what you expect from a capture the flag map. It is pretty much chaotic, but with large open spaces instead of many small rooms and corridors. There are some inspirations taken from Harvest, but Applejack feels different from other Capture the Flag maps in a good way. Normally, I'm not a fan of Capture the Flag maps, but Applejack shows the potential of this game mode, where it can be challenging without being too frustrating, while also looking great. Atom Smash is the normal version of Monster Mash, which is in the Scream Fortress. I have always loved this map. The objective is to kill people, collect what they drop, and in Atom Smash, mercenaries drop highly radioactive materials that are possibly highly dangerous to human health. Wow. You collect these stuff and periodically the middle point opens up, allowing you to put your radioactive stuff into what seems to be a nuclear reactor. Atom Smash is a great addition to this update and I really enjoy this game mode. I would love to see more similar maps where the objective is main around killing each other. There is more to the strategy as anyone can kill you and steal your points at any time. The map also gives X-ray vision to each team's number one carrier, giving you a chance to turn the whole match around by killing that person. In short, I really like this map, it's pretty cool. It reminds me of Half-Life and actually, the voice actor for the map's announcer is actually the same as Dr. Kleiner from Black Mesa, making it canon that two games are definitely takes place in the same universe. Core approaching critical mass. In three, two, one. Great Scott, you did it. And who said you couldn't count on disposable labor? Haydal hey is the worst map of this update. The map takes place underwater in a concrete building. You could have made a glass dome with a fish swimming around, but instead, it's a concrete box. Not exactly the peak of map design. This map was clearly inspired by Steel, which is a great map, but Haydal makes it look bad and the gameplay is also poor. Each capture point is weird looking and the last point is just a small circle. Possibly the tiniest capture point in the whole game. Since it's so small, demos can easily camp the point. You would think that capturing other points would make it easier to capture the last point. But no, it only makes the last point higher. It doesn't make it any easier to capture, making the whole point of the game mode useless. In fact, it makes it harder if you capture the other points. As the attacking team, the best you can do is just to go to the last point and spawn camp. That is how we win in this game. There is no other way. Heydal is just a bad map, I'm sorry. Berghausen is a map based on the Berghausen castle in Germany. This map's game mode is medieval mode, which is final back after all these years. I had my doubts about this map, but after playing for a while, I understand it now. While it seems weird at first with the multi-stage attack defense game mode, I think I get what the map is trying to do. If I ask you to imagine a medieval battle, you would probably think of an epic battle with thousands of knights, archers and cavalry. Since TFT is only 24 player multiplayer game, you cannot really get that epic feeling. 
So the map focuses on the action. Without guns, you cannot do a lot of the usual stuff like uber pushes, rocket jumping, or building a sentry gun. Your only best friend is your sword or your trusted bow. I don't think Berghausen is a great map, but it feeds people's medieval mode hunger by being stupid and fun. And uh, that is the point of medieval mode. It's just fun just to go around and whip people. I really hope Valve decides to add more medieval maps and make this game mode separate instead of throwing under the MISC maps. Megaton is probably the most interesting map in this update for one reason. The nuclear bomb. Regardless of which team wins, nuclear bomb in the middle will go off and blow up everyone on the map. Honestly, I don't really get what the goal is here. They could have made the nuclear bomb aspect more interesting instead of just having a big explosion at the end of each round. Maybe make it so one team is trying to nuke the other team's island. Instead, we have the generic King of the Hill game mode. Don't get me wrong, I love King of the Hill, but I feel like this map has one of the laziest designs out there. The map takes place on an island in the middle of Pacific Ocean, and it looks really nice. A nice addition to the summer update. However, after playing on this map, you quickly realize that it has one of the worst sniper sightlines ever possible in a TF2 map. <laughs> the rooftops are entirely accessible, allowing snipers to have perfect way to snipe everywhere. Since it's a tiny island with barely any cover or buildings, the capture point is visible to snipers, making it impossible to capture the point safely. You have to keep moving around to avoid getting sniped. Not only that, I have even seen the snipers sit inside the water and snipe people. Megaton is yet another map that looks gorgeous but plays horribly. It makes Harvest look like a good map. To be fair, it's not the worst map. The nuke, the nuke makes it funny, the map looks funny and it's fun to play for a while but I wouldn't want this map to be available all year. Kachoira is a king of the hill map that takes place near a waterfall. From what I can tell, the two teams are fighting to take the shipment from the helicopter. The map definitely looks like a place in the South America with lush trees, an amazing looking waterfall and piranhas. Honestly, there is not much to say about this map other than that it's a great King of the Hill map. Unlike many other King of the Hill maps where most people treat it as deathmatch, the middle point is a crucial part of this map, making a lot of the action happen here. Apparently, this map was part of the Tropic Crisis, a community made update for TF2. While I never really talk about this, I think it's really great to see community members working together to make content for the game. Even though the whole update will probably not make it into the game anytime soon, most of the maps from this update actually made it into this summer update. I think that's a really big win. Canaveral is a map about the space race where both teams are interested in sending a rocket to the moon but to decide who uses the launch pad first, they have to fight. The map is like any other 5 control point map where both teams are trying to capture all of the points one by one. Visually it looks okay and gameplay wise it's also okay. There's really much not to talk about this map other than that it's good. I wouldn't say amazing, just good, so the thumbs up. I would play here. Embargo is a map that takes place in Cuba, where blue team goes to casino and blows up a bomb filled with blue paint. Amazing. The story is that Cuba is under a dictatorship and they're doing money laundering, which causes trouble for the Manco. Our mercenaries have to stop them. Blue team represents our mercenaries, while red team is actually Cuban soldiers. So it's not a red versus blue kind of interesting but also weird. It doesn't really sound like something that would happen in the TFT universe. I wish this map was more about red and blue fighting over control of the casino rather than trying to stop this Cuban guy money laundering thing. It would have been 10 times better. Visually speaking, this map is really vibrant and detailed, maybe too vibrant. I have seen a lot of people complain about how the colors are too saturated, which is a valid criticism. This map feels like mercenaries were dropped in the middle of Cuba. Obviously it doesn't look like the 2007 TF2 maps with the grayish 
and desert colors. But visibility in a map is important, and map makers have to consider the team colors when designing the maps. Other than that, the map looks great in my opinion. Gameplay wise, it is okay, nothing amazing, just okay. The only thing that's weird is the last point. There, there's a horrible ch choke point. If you are the attacking team, there is simply no way to push without an uber push. That is why I don't think Embargo is that good. It's a decent map, there's some gimmicks such as robots that give you health kits, and the fact that your payload comes from a helicopter, stuff that really makes the map feel unique, but those alone do not really save this map. Odyssey, or what I would like to call Downwards, is a map where the attacking team is pushing the cart downwards. Except the cart doesn't roll down, you have to manually push it. The idea is simple. For the first couple of points, the attacking team has an insane height advantage. As they go down, that advantage slowly reduces, and at the end, the defending team gets a height advantage. This map might be the most beautiful map of the summer update. It takes place in Greece, and the objective is to blow up a big marble cutting machine. Gameplay wise, it was great. It, it's a pretty long map, so the defending team doesn't lose the whole match after losing the first couple of points. There are a couple of choke points that make it difficult to attack. Other than that, I, I don't really have much to say other than that this is a good map. Overgrown is a map that I actually played before this update, and it's not that great. Map makers have to balance between making a place that can exist in real life and a map that is designed for the gameplay. Except Overground has so much visual clutter. Bunch of stairs, platforms, rooms. You would think, okay, this map doesn't really look great, but at least the gameplay is good, right? No, not really. The map feels too big. With way too many places to flank and go, we're talking about casual play, where people are only able to work together on maps like Dust Bowl, where you have a big choke point forcing people to work together. Except on this map, each room seems to have at least 3 or 4 ways to go out. What really happens is that the defending team purely defends the control points, and the attacking team is scattered around the map trying to make it to the point. When the defending team is all together, they usually crush the attacking team one by one. This map has only one good gimmick going for it. After capturing the first point, you can get on the train and have a really good flank. Except after using it once, the enemy team learns about it and simply camps to train making the whole point of the train completely useless. Maybe you can give it a chance right after capturing the first point, other than that it's pretty underwhelming. I have seen many people who like this map, but I don't, so I'm not sure. Am I missing something crucial about this map? In my time playing this map, I really don't like it. That was all the maps for the 2024 summer update. I hope I didn't forget to mention anything. Like I said at the beginning, if you have something different in your mind, you can leave a comment below. But yeah, I enjoyed pulling all of the new maps. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!